But um, Dr. Hayes is a clinical researcher whose annual salary, as stated in his appointment letter, is 300000 He applied and was awarded an NIH project. Um, he plans to spend 20% of his time working on this NIH project, with the remainder being spent on his clinical activities. So in this case, um, the proposed cap that we think that's going to pass for this year is 189600 um, How much can he charge to his NIH project if he spends 20% of his effort as proposed? So um, when you think about kind of the charges to the sponsored projects in relation to the NIH salary cap, if you're going to propose 20% of your time, you can charge 20% of the cap. So he, in this case, he can charge 20% of the 189,600, which is the 37, 000, which is $37,920. Um, so this is kind of a hard concept for people to get when we're trying to add in this NIH cap cost sharing um, to get to this expected level of effort. But because some people are thinking, look, all of the charges that, that I have don't exceed the cap. I'm not exceeding the cap. But if you're only putting 20% effort, the only amount that you can list in your proposal is the, um, the NIH salary cap. So you can only charge up to 20% or up to your effort percentage of the cap. Um, so what would his effort card look like? His NIH project salary, that calculated amount of 20% um, of the cap, which was 37,920, this actually only represents 12.64% of his salary. So to get to that 20% effort that he's committing, um, that you take the difference between that 20% and the 12.64, and that plug, which is the cost share, um, is how we represent that on the effort card, is 7.53%, or $22,080. So again, you'd have um, 12.64 as the payroll percentage, because when you really figure out how much they charged in relation to what their actual institutional base salary is, that only equates to 12.64% of his total payroll. 7.53% um, cost share to get to that 20% that he committed. Um, total computed effort, which is the payroll and the cost share. And in this case, hopefully he actually spent that 20% and he would certify that 20% in the last column. Now for us at our institution, we do our salary cap corrections on a, I believe it's a biweekly or monthly basis. So for us, they would certify their 20%. The faculty wouldn't necessarily be worrying about whether it's cap or not cap, but our financial staff would make sure that that's correct and what's actually charged to the, they would move off any charges over the cap. And so we have a internal controls and a process over that. So their effort certification <clears throat> might just look like I work 20%. Um, but the actual calculations are documented, supplementary documentation that we have on, on the back end. So um, there are a lot of questions. We, of course, will be I just want to add something really quick to that. I just want to add that for our institution, we, um, we calculate the salary cap within our effort reporting system. So the system will look at the person's the individual salary. It'll go and look what the current cap was for that time frame because we'll have certain caps. We'll change the cap for every time the, the dates for those. And so the system will look at it, calculate it against their salary, and then automatically apply that salary cap onto their effort statement. So, yeah. Lots of different ways to get to the same goal. Um, 